Good morning. Today is Monday, February 21st. I'm Maureen Kyle with your 3 News Now morning update. Thanks for spending a few minutes with me on the WKYC Facebook and Instagram pages. And we start with Holly with a check of today's forecast. Hi, Holly. Hi, Maureen. It's so nice. I mean, it's just a beauty of a day considering the kids are off with President's Day today. And take advantage of this. We're going to end up with some sunshine initially, partly to mostly sunny at times through this morning and even into the afternoon. And look at these temperatures this afternoon in the mid 50s, well above our normal highs of 40 degrees, which in fact, most of you started off above our normal highs for this time of the year. We'll see cloud cover increase overnight. And then as we get into tomorrow morning and we're joining you on go, we'll be talking about some scattered light rain showers initially. This is the view tomorrow morning at 5 a.m. Then it becomes steady by mid to late morning. And by the time we get into tomorrow afternoon and evening, moderate to even heavy at times. So it will essentially turn into a Tuesday soaker. But we are going to see our highs tomorrow approaching 60 degrees. The back edge of that rain you can see by later tomorrow night. So here's a look at the forecast moving through the rest of this week, the last week of February. It's hard to believe. So you see a highs 59 tomorrow, rain likely, then 30s Wednesday, tracking just scattered snow showers for Thursday, Friday. Not a big storm system, but cold. And as we get into this last weekend, it will be on the chilly side for February, but at least we're dry, Maureen. All right, Holly, thank you so much. Well, developing this morning, President Joe Biden is open to a possible meeting with Russian President Vladimir Putin as long as the country holds off on invading Ukraine. That's according to the White House. U.S. leaders believe there is an imminent assault on Ukraine and they are urging Putin to use diplomacy. Secretary of State Antony Blinken and Russian Foreign Minister are set to meet on Thursday in Europe if an invasion does not happen. Meanwhile, here at home, many in the Ukrainian community in Cleveland are worried about their families overseas and the possible invasion. More than 100 protesters gathered outside St. Jehoshaphat Cathedral in Parma on Sunday, the eighth anniversary of Russia's annexation of Crimea. They are praying for peace and raising awareness of what is happening right now over in Eastern Europe. It's not a civil war. It's not insurrection. This is a war by Russia against Ukraine. Pray for uh, peace in Europe and in, uh, uh, in Ukraine. Right now at the capital of Ukraine, there's a professor from Case Western Reserve University. Roman Sheremeta was trying to open an American university, but the threat of war is affecting his day to day living. So Ukraine is suffering immensely right now economically and Russia is the aggressor and Ukraine is paying the price. You have to understand that this whole fight between Russia and Ukraine is a fight between the two worldviews. One is very authoritarian. Uh, very collectivistic. Another one is more democratic. It All are hoping that diplomacy will take over, but an expert on Ukraine that we spoke with says that is highly unlikely, adding that right now we just have to wait and see what happens next. All right, local headlines to bring you now. Here are three things that you need to know from over the weekend. Cleveland police are now investigating a deadly shooting in the Flats East Bank. This happened Sunday afternoon at West 10th Street and Front Street, just outside Anejo Tequila Joint. A man in his 30s was rushed to the hospital but died soon after he arrived. No word yet on any suspects or arrests this morning. The damage caused by a fire at an elementary school in Parma is estimated at more than $1 million. Investigators believe someone deliberately set the fire at St. Anthony of Padua School Saturday morning. Thankfully, no one was hurt. The school is figuring out how to move forward with the school year. If you know anything about this arson, you are asked to call Parma Police or the Fire Marshal's tip line. Cleveland Police are asking for your help identifying a man who tried to lure a teenager into his car. This is a look at the car. It happened on February 8th on Madison Avenue at West 106th Street. Officers say the driver tried to lure a 14-year-old child into the car, but the child refused. If you know the owner of this car, please call police. Well, NBA All-Star Weekend is over here in Cleveland, and the All-Star Game MVP, Steph Curry, is helping out the city with his All-Star Game performance. Curry promised that for every point scored in the big game, he would donate $1,000 to the Cleveland Metro School District. For every three-pointer, he'd donate $3,000. And if he won the MVP award, he'd donate $10,000. With all of his All-Star performance, Curry is promising to donate $108,000 to CMSD.
Thank you for taking the time to join me for this 3 News Now morning update. Our digital team will continue to bring you the stories making headlines around the world and Northeast Ohio. Make sure you continue to check our social media pages and WKYC.com throughout the day. I'm Maureen Kyle. We'll see you tomorrow morning on Go starting at 4.30 a.m. Have a great day, everybody.